Hey, praise the Lord. Michael Jakes here. We're here once again with the Sunday Sermon Series. We're glad you're able to join us. Uh, once again, we are streaming live over Facebook and YouTube, and we pray that you'll be able to stay with us once again as we open up the Word of God. Let me say a hello to those of, those of you who are watching right now uh, on, on uh, Satellite TV. Uh, and we thank the Lord for you, and, and we thank you, and we pray that you will be able to stay with us also as we open up the Word of God. Amen. Uh, today we're going to be coming from the book of Genesis. Our series is entitled, uh, our series again here is entitled, it is entitled Hope from the Beginning. Amen. And as we get into it, we have been talking about uh, the glorious things that have happened uh, in the book of Genesis. Amen. And today will be no different. Today we want to talk about walking with God. Now walk with God because walking with God is so very important. Two things when we talk about serving God and these two phrases uh, will pretty much sum up our life in the Lord. It's walking with the Lord and living for God. These two uh, phrases are somewhat synonymous uh, but there are two words that go hand in hand when we talk about walking with God and living for uh, the Lord. And those two phrases are uh, faith and intimacy. Faith and intimacy. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit today as we get into it. Once again, uh, we are a ministry dedicated to uh, the propagation and proclamation of the Word of God. You can find us uh on our website, which is that's the word .org. Uh, If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is also That's the Word Ministries. You can also go to Spreaker.com and hear all of our uh, podcasts uh, if you just like to listen in. That's Spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. -E -E Amen. And so once again, uh, we just bless the Lord and thank him uh, once again for giving us uh, an opportunity uh, once again, to open up uh, the Word of God. We are going to open up in a word of prayer. And once again, let me just say hello to our friends on Abundant Life TV. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. We honor you once again. And we thank you for being with us today. Uh, Lord, we pray that as your word goes out, Lord, that you will give us clarity of mind and heart, even as your word goes forth. Lord, we don't, we don't want to hear from anyone but you. So, Lord, we pray that you will have your way. Draw souls unto you, Lord Jesus, as this word goes out. Lord, we pray uh, that your will might be done. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all things. And in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good and God is on the throne, as we always say. Amen. We're going to take you to the book of Genesis. Genesis. And we're going to start uh, in Genesis uh, chapter number four. We're going to we're going to sort of go in chapter four, chapter five and chapter six. But once again, uh, as we speak today, uh, as we speak today, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, the subject. Uh, and that subject is now walk with God. Now walk with God. And that is so uh, vitally uh, important uh, as we live for the Lord, that we walk with God. Amen. Let me start here in Genesis chapter 4 and the last verse in Genesis chapter number 4. It says, And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. That's important to remember. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So scripture seems to indicate that it is here uh, that many women began uh, to understand and realize that there was a God in heaven. Not that they didn't know it before, but now they began to call on the Lord. After the birth of Enos, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. And now we go to Genesis chapter number five. And once again, we're talking about walking with God, amen? And what does that entail? What does it mean to walk with God? And how do we walk with God? And how do we live for God, amen? And if you are not walking with God and living for God, we pray that by the end of this word, that you will be set, primed, and ready to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Genesis chapter number five, and let's start here in verse uh, number 21. It says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God 
after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. Now that's that's important because something now happens. Verse number 24, and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. That is very important because when we look, when we look at the life of Enoch, Enoch is a picture. Enoch is a picture of you and I. Amen. One day, one day we're going to be living and walking on this earth, and one day we are going to be gone. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to call us. He's going to call us away into the rapture, and we will be gone. Amen. And so we look forward to that day. So once again, let me read that verse. Verse number 24, and Enoch walked with God. He walked with God, and he was not. In other words, nobody could find him. He walked with God. He lived his life, and then God took him. Amen. He walked with God. Now, let me catapult. Let me catapult. We're going to bring it all together, but let me catapult here uh, to the book of Genesis chapter number six. Chapter number six. And let me re start reading from verse number five. It says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah, you see, God always has a remnant. God always has a people that will call upon him. God always has those who have not forgotten them. Even in the midst of the corruption that was in the day of Noah, God has a people. Amen. And in this case, God had a man. He had a man. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect. And here it comes. In his generations, and Noah walked with God. Amen. Noah walked with God. Now, in Scripture, we will find that there are only two men. Now, we know that. Let me let me just preface this statement by saying this: all of the men that we read about in the Old Testament who served God, I'm talking about the prophets and others, they all walked with God. In other words, they had a relationship with God. However, the Holy Spirit makes a point at telling us that Noah specifically walked with God and that Enoch specifically walked with God. The Holy Spirit was trying to tell us that there was an exact intimacy that existed between these two men and God. They were able to hear his voice and they were able to hear him when he spoke and they were under his, uh, they were under his uh, jurisdiction, if you want to uh, put it that way. They knew who God was, and they operated in the light that they had. In the light that they had, they operated, amen? And that becomes very, very important. Now, when we talk, when we talk about walking with God, you and I, you and I also are called to walk with God. If you are a Christian right now, you are walking with God. If he has called you out of this present darkness into his marvelous light, you are walking with God. If you have his Holy Spirit living inside of you, you are walking with God. Amen. The day that you said yes to Jesus, you were walking with God. Amen. Now, the book of Ephesians tells us something about this walking with God. Uh, walking with God, uh, and, and the book of Ephesians puts out four different facets, four different facets of those who, who walk with God. If we go to the, if we can go to the book of, uh, uh, the book of uh, Ephesians, Ephesians, let's start in Ephesians uh, chapter number four, Ephesians chapter number four, uh, starting in verse uh, number 17, Ephesians chapter four, starting uh, in verse uh, number 17. Here's what it says. Uh, 
All right. Ephesians 4 and 17. It says, And this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Walk not as other Gentiles walk. What is one of the marks of those who are walking with God? We do not walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, which means that we, there is a, there should be a blockage. There should be a wall between us and the world. Not that we cut ourselves off from the world because we cannot go out of this world. We still must deal. We still must deal with the world and worldly matters to a certain extent. We are here. We're not to shelter ourselves off away from the world, but we are not to be intimately related to the world. Why? Because we are intimately related to the Lord. Amen. And so when we become a part and parcel of the world, with the world, align ourselves with what the world is all about, what we do is we uh, we are become uh, adulterous in a very real way. Spiritual sense, we become adulterous when we go arm in arm with the world. And so because we are walking with him, we must not, we should not, we cannot walk as those who are in the world walk. Walk not as other Gentiles walk. That's a mark of a walker uh, with the Lord. Uh, secondly, in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number five uh, and verse uh, number one, chapter number five and verse number one. Listen, Paul the Apostle holds no punches. Paul the, Apostle, Paul the Apostle never held anything back. He tells us the truth. He tells us exactly what we need to know. Be ye therefore, verse number one, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Followers of God as dear children and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us, and hath given himself for a, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. And so he says, listen, if you are one who walks with God, you are to walk in love. Love. Why is walking in love? Why would you think walking in love is so very important? Because this is the mark, how Jesus, how Jesus said that, Men and women, those outside of the ark of safety, those outside of the cross, this is how they will know that you and I love him because we love one another. In other words, it doesn't matter how much you go to church. It doesn't matter how much you dance and shout. It doesn't matter how much you involve yourself in church activities. All of those things are good. They are proper. They have their place. But that is not how the world will distinguish you. That is not how the world will know that you are, that you belong to the Lord. The world is not going to say, wow, they go to church a lot. They must be in Christ. Then, No, if you love one another, when they see you and I having love one for another, that is how the world will mark us as true disciples of God the Lord. Amen. That is how. And so we are, we are to walk in love. We are absolutely uh, to walk in love. And that is very important uh, to remember. Walk in love. Amen. Scripture also tells us that we also, uh, in the book of Ephesians, that we also ought to walk worthy. We ought to walk worthy of this profession. Walk worthy. In other words, if you call yourself a Christian, Live like a Christian. If you say you are a Christian and the Lord is in you, then you need to live as such. Amen? So that's very important. That's very important to remember. We are to walk worthy of this calling. Okay? We are definitely to walk worthy of this calling. When we go down to Ephesians uh, chapter number 5 uh, and verse uh, number 15, uh, we read this. See then that ye walk circumspectly circumspectly, not as fools, but of as wise. In other words, that word circumspectly, it means simply walk carefully. Walk 
carefully as a Christian. You need to walk. You need to know where you're going. You need to know what you are doing. You need to guard your heart with all diligence because out of your heart flow the issues of life. You need to make sure and beware of those who are speaking into your life. Okay, that is very important. You just cannot let anyone speak into your life. You need words that are going to build you up and lift you up. And you need people that are going to lead you and guide you along the way through the cross. Amen. Those are the types of individuals and those are the type of words that you need uh, in your life. Walk, see to it then. That means that the responsibility is upon you and I. He says, you make sure. You make sure, see to it that you walk carefully. Amen. The Bible says that we ought to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan is out, and he's on the prowl, and he wants to swallow you and I up. Amen. That's what he wants to do. That's his agenda. He wants to stop the flow of the Spirit in your life. He wants to stop the work of the, of the Lord in your life. Anything that he can do to delay, to distract, and, and to keep you from uh, uh, fulfilling the will of the Lord in your life, he will do. Paul the Apostle tells us very clearly, he says, Satan hindered us. That's what Satan does. He is a hinderer. He will stop you. He will uh, He will attempt to stop you from doing the work that God has called you to do. Amen? But we must, we must be uh, uh, careful. We must be careful. Here, finally, we read in verse number 18, right there, it says, and be not, and, and be not, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Verse number, let's go up to verse number eight. Ephesians chapter five, verse number eight. It says, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. And because of that, it says now walk as children of light. Walk now as children of light. Amen. That's so very important. When we look around, when we look around the world today and we see the things that Satan is attempting to accomplish, amen, we know that we must walk as children of light. Why? Because Satan has the world in his grip. The world without Christ is in his grip. First John says that the world is, is under his sway. They do, they do what they do because they don't know any better. Those that are in the world, outside of Christ. Verse number four, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter four, verse number four. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We said earlier, we said earlier, that Satan has an agenda on you and I to stop the flow and the work and the will of God in this world. That's part of his agenda. But another part of his agenda is to keep those outside of the ark of safety, those outside of Christ, to keep them blinded to the truth. That's why we must be vigilant and make sure that the truth goes out. We must not allow anything to stop us or to hinder us from getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Amen? The world, more than anything, okay, they need the cross of Jesus Christ. The world will tell you things like there was a song years ago, a, a song uh, many, many years ago, and I can recall it when I was a little boy, okay? And the message sounds real, and the message is very humanistic, and it doesn't sound like a bad thing. But the, the song said, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Now, that sounds good. That sounds very precious. But the world needs Jesus. Okay? The world needs Jesus. The world needs the cross. You and I, you and I, children of the Lord, we are the possessors of the message that will set the world free. And we need to let it go in these last 
of the last days. We need to make sure that we are preaching and teaching this gospel. Amen. We need to make sure that we shine this light. It is Jesus and Jesus alone who saves, who heals, who delivers, who sets free. Amen. It is Jesus alone. When we go to the book of when we go to the book of Luke, we go to the book of Luke, uh, Luke chapter uh, number four, and we read about Jesus' mission statement on earth that he has given to us to continue uh, to carry forth. Luke uh, chapter number four, uh, starting here, uh, starting here uh, in verse, Luke chapter four, starting in, in verse uh, number 18. It says, for the spirit, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. That was Jesus' own mission statement. And that's what he has given us to carry forth. As we walk in this world, we are to make sure that we spread this gospel. We are to preach deliverance. We are to preach deliverance. What is deliverance? The gospel. The gospel is a gospel of deliverance. It saves. It saves. Amen. The, the book of Romans chapter one tells us that the gospel, he says that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It is the gospel. It is the power of God that leads men and women to be saved. The gospel. The gospel alone. Not politics. Not humanism. Not any other ism. Not any other osophy. The, the gospel is not philosophy. It is the gospel. It is the gospel alone. Amen. Not a mixed gospel, but the gospel. The unadulterated gospel unfiltered gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what saves. Amen. And we bring that word. We bring that word as we walk uh, as children uh, of light. Amen. We bring that word. And so the men of old, the men of old that we just read about, Enoch uh, and Noah, they walked in the light that they had. And you know the story of Noah. God spoke to him and he went out and he built this, he, he built an ark. He built an ark for him, himself, and his family members. And, and he was protected. They were in that ark of safety. Amen. And God protected them as long as they were in uh, that ark. So there was, once again, there was an intimacy uh, relating to Enoch and, and, and Noah and the other, and the other men and women of God through pepper throughout the Old Testament that had that connection, that relationship with the Lord. The Lord was able to speak to them and they were able to hear and they were able to understand and they were able to convey and to give out that which the Lord uh, had given them back to the people because they had that intimacy with the Lord. Walking with God indicates that we need to have that intimacy with him. Amen. But not just intimacy. We talked about there are two two facets between uh, when we talk about walking with God and living for God. The other one is faith. When we talk about faith, faith is how we got here. Faith is how we got in Christ in the first place. Amen. We put our faith in Christ uh, and his finished work. If I can go uh, to the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter uh, number two, Galatians chapter number two. Uh, and verse uh, number 20, this is Paul the Apostle speaking. He says, I am crucified with Christ. He says, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And here's how we walk with the Lord. Here's how we live for him. He says, and the life which I now live in the flesh, he says, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How do we come in? By faith. How do we continue in? By faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's important. Now, when we talk about this faith, there are three facets. When I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in this way, there are three facets to this faith that we talk about. Once again, you need to have that right object of faith. Let me put it, let me put that this way. You need to have the right and the proper object of faith. And that is 
Jesus Christ. He is the object of faith. He is the one that we focus on when it comes to faith, okay? Uh, great faith must have a great object, okay? And that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is where we place our faith. We don't place our faith in anyone else, and we do not place our faith in anything else. We place our faith in Christ and who he is. He is the one who saved us. He is the one who delivered us. He is the one who took us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. He, he is the one. And so we place our faith in him and him alone. But there are three, three facets. Let me give you three facets of this faith. When you have your faith properly placed, okay, as we walk with God and have this intimacy with him, there are three things that proper faith will bring out. Amen? Number one, you're going to have what I'm going to call, you're going to have that even if kind of faith. An even if kind of faith. For that, let me go to the book of Daniel. Let me go to the book of Daniel. For that even if uh, kind uh, of faith. Uh, we go to uh, Daniel uh, chapter number uh, 3, verse number 17. It says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will, <laughs> he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden, the golden image which thou hast set up. They were sure. They had faith that God was going to deliver them. But they said, if not, see, we need, when we have our faith in the right object, you see, they know in whom they had believed. They knew in whom they had believed, amen? And we must know in whom we believe. We must know in whom we put our faith in, amen? And that faith, when we have the proper faith, we are going to have that even if type of faith. Even if things don't turn out the way I expect them, even if things don't turn out the way I would prefer them, even if I'm still going to trust him, I'm still going to trust him. I'm still going to refuse to worship the image. I'm still going to refuse to walk as the Gentiles walk. I'm still going to live as the Lord would have me to live. Even when everything in me and everything around me says no. Even if kind of faith. When your faith is properly placed in Christ. Secondly, you're going to have, or you're going to have that even though kind of faith. What is an even though kind of faith? Well, we go to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk. And in the book of Habakkuk, uh, chapter number three, there were some very, very terrible things going on um, in the land at that time. And Habakkuk speaks, and, and when he speaks, you, you, can, you, can, you can hear him uh, when he says these words. Here's what he says in verse number 17, Habakkuk chapter three and verse number 17. He says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Nothing is going right. He has nothing. The doors are closed and he doesn't see anything coming in. But in verse number 18, he says, yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's Christ and him crucified. The God of my salvation. Yet I will rejoice. We need to have that even though type of faith. What I call for short, yet faith. Yet faith. Even if it looks like this, even though it is like this, I'm still going to trust you. Doesn't matter what it looked like. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not going by what I see. I'm not, I'm not going by what I see. I'm going by what I know, by what I believe, not by what I see. Amen. And so we need to have, when we have our faith 
properly placed in Christ, we're going to have that even if kind of faith, and we're going to have that even though kind of faith. Amen? Finally, the third type of faith we're going to have when we have our faith properly placed is that nevertheless type of faith. A nevertheless type of faith. We go to the book of Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter number uh, 26. Matthew chapter number 26. And I'm sure uh, that, you, that you know where I'm going here. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, Gethsemane and the enemy was bearing down upon him. The Bible says that sweat like drops of blood were pouring from him. And Jesus and Jesus begins to speak. And he speaks uh, these powerful, uh, powerful words. Here's what he says. He says, Then come, let me start at verse number 36. Then come of Jesus and and them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very, very heavy. Verse number 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. You can sense the agony that Christ was under. You can sense it. We can't feel what he felt. No man has ever felt what he felt. But you can sense the agony as he prayed. And this is what he said. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thine be done. That nevertheless type of faith is a submitting kind of faith. It is, it is a surrendering faith that says, Lord, whatever you want, that's what I want. Whatever you, what, whatever comes, Lord, I receive. Lord, because I know that everything that comes to me, I know that it has already passed through your hands and you have deemed it able because you know that you will be with me. And no matter what takes place, you know that I will not go under. If the fire comes, whether the flood comes, I know by faith that I will yet stand. Nevertheless, type of faith. That is the kind of faith that we need to have as we walk, as we live for the Lord. You're going to have those moments. You're going to have those times in your life where the enemy where the enemy is going to come in like a flood. He is going to come in like a flood. I, 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 don't, I don't mean to come at you with uh, sounding pessimistic because I'm not being pessimistic. I'm being very realistic. The enemy will come like a flood. The enemy will come against you and God will allow the enemy to come against you. He will allow the enemy to come against you at times. But once again, Scripture says in the book of James that the trying of our faith worketh patience and that we are to allow patience to have her perfect work that we may be whole and entire. Okay, once again, that's part of our growth process. God will allow the hard times, okay? Into each life, some rain must fall, amen? So there's got to be some rain in your life so that you can appreciate the sun, okay? There's got to be some. So when we go through these things, let's not look to the Lord and say, Lord, why me? Why me? Why, why, why not you? Why should not the Lord allow his goodness to be given to you? Why should not the Lord allow his grace to shine upon you? Because it's in those times. It's in those times where all you seem to be able to see is darkness and, 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 and some bad things. It's those moments. It's those times. Uh, that we need to trust him and trust him even more. Amen. And so we need to have those uh, types of faith. That's, that's what we need to remember when we look at walking with God and when we look at uh, living for the Lord, walking and living for the Lord. So, so very important. Now, when we look, uh, when we look at, um, when we further look at this, this thing called walking with God, we understand several things. Well, the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. 
he was a preacher of righteousness. Amen. And so that means that as we walk, we are to proclaim. Okay. We are to proclaim. And to proclaim does not mean, it does not infer that it means that you need to be standing behind a pulpit. Okay. The word preach gives off that connotation that I need to be behind a pulpit. No, no. To preach means to proclaim. It means to tell forth. That's what it means. It means to speak out. Speak out what? Speak out the message of the gospel. To speak, to proclaim that which the Lord uh, has given you. And so that's what we mean uh, when we say that he was a preacher uh, of righteousness. Amen? Um, and we read that about him uh, in, the book of, um, uh, in the book of Genesis chapter number 4. Uh, chapter number four uh, and verse uh, number 26. Once again, that's when man began to call upon the name uh, of the Lord. Amen. Uh, the Bible says uh, in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter number 11, that those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let me go to uh, uh, the book of Hebrews once again. Let me go back to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter uh, number 11, uh, where it speaks, where it speaks about Noah. By faith, it says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, that means moved with reverence, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Faith in Christ and who he is. Amen. And so, once again, faith is plays a prominent role, obviously, in walking with God and living for God. Put those two phrases together as we said at the beginning. We go back to verse number 5. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 5. By faith, Enoch was translated. That means God took him, snatched him away, raptured him out. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He did those things that pleased God. It does not indicate that either Noah or Enoch were perfect men. By no means, there are no perfect men. Only Jesus Christ is and was perfect. But once again, they lived their life in such a way that it pleased the Lord. So much so for Enoch that God took him from this earth. Amen. Took him from this earth. And that's, that's very important to remember. And then we go to verse number six, Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That means that we know that Enoch had faith. We know that Enoch had properly placed faith. Amen. He had faith in the word that God had given to Adam and Eve concerning the coming Redeemer. The coming Redeemer we see in uh, the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15. Amen. Genesis 3 and verse number 15, the first prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, the fact that he would come and destroy the works of the enemy. That's that's what Genesis 3, 15 is all about. And, and, and Enoch had faith in that promise. OK, he had faith in that promise. And so did Noah by faith. OK, he, they believed in the promise to come and that Faith was accounted to them, even though we don't read it here. We don't read it here. We don't, we read it when we see Abraham. When Abraham comes on the scene, we read that he believed God. He believed what God told him, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And I do believe that these two men will fall into that same category. They believed God. They believed what God had spoken, and it was accounted unto them also as righteousness. Enoch. Noah, they were saved, saved. Oh, not in the sense that you and I understand saved, not in the same sense that they didn't know Jesus, they didn't call upon Jesus, but they believed in the promise of the coming Messiah. They believed and God saw that and, and took them and, and took, actually took this man 
uh, Enoch out of this world. Amen. And brought him to himself. And so faith, once again, is very important. Walking with God, intimacy. Living for God, faith. Put them together. Faith and intimacy. If we have a right object of faith, those two things will be in place. Intimacy with the Lord and faith in his finished work. Amen. That is uh, just part of, just as part of what it means to walk with God. Amen. That's, it's, it's only a part. And there's no way that we can get uh, to all of it. But that's just part of what it means uh, to walk with. Uh, with God. Those who walk with God, once again, they call upon his name, they praise him, uh, they worship him, we who call upon God, uh, and we testify. And we do that publicly. We do it publicly, okay? There's no shame in what we do, amen? No shame at all. We proclaim it. We're telling the world that Jesus is the answer. We are telling the world that it is only Jesus who saves. That's what the gospel is is all about, amen? And you may be watching right now, and maybe maybe you've heard some things today that maybe you don't understand. Maybe you've heard some things today uh, that you have never heard before. Or maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a tugging at your heart right now that maybe, maybe you're saying to yourself, I'm not saved. I'm not a Christian. I don't know the Lord in the same way that you have been talking about. You see, in order for a person to be saved, they need to come under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Salvation is, once again, I will repeat, salvation is not about how much you attend church, how much you go to church, or how many different things you may be involved in in your particular church. That's not what salvation is all about. Salvation is about a personal relationship with the Lord. That is when the Holy Spirit brings conviction to your heart. In other words, you realize that you are a sinner. If you've never realized, if you've never understood the fact that you are a sinner, that you have sinned against God, then you have never been under conviction. You don't just walk into church, start doing church things, and say, I'm a Christian now. No. No. Your life, there is a marked change when the Holy Spirit comes into your life. A marked change. The Holy Spirit will make wholesale changes to your life. And as I said, maybe you're listening right now and you've never given your heart to Jesus. Maybe you've been in church for your entire life or for a period of time, but you are not born again. Amen. Born again. The Spirit of God enters into you and you become born again. Let me read you what scripture says uh, in the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter number 10. And I'm going to start reading uh, from verse number nine. And this is how we all got saved. Romans chapter number 10, starting in verse number nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. It says, thou shalt be saved. Saved means you shall be delivered. Delivered from what? Delivered from sin. Delivered from the penalty for sin, which is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And until a man or a woman recognizes, realizes, understands that they are under the verdict of death, then they will not be saved. That's how we get saved. Verse number 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In closing, may I just, in closing, may I just give you the words the simple words that Jesus speaks to the church at Laodicea. And he said simply in verse number 20, Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is speaking to the church at Laodicea, which had, which had in essence, put Jesus out through their activity and their behaviors. But it also speaks to you and I. When we are outside of Christ ourselves, Christ is outside of us. He says, behold, I stand at the door of your life, of your heart, and he's knocking. He's knocking. And he says, if any man, any man or woman, if you hear his voice, he says, if you hear my voice, he says, I, and open the door. That means allow him to come in. That means say yes to Jesus. That means confess him as Lord, as we just read in the book of, uh, the book of Romans chapter number 10. If I confess him, the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, I will come in and sup. That means fellowship, commune. I will sup with him and he with me. I believe that the Lord is knocking on the doors of hearts, even right now. That you sense that you need to give your heart to the Lord. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And if you want to begin this life of walking with the Lord, if you want to begin this life of living for God, we're going to pray. And once again, there's, well, let me just say this. When we pray this prayer, there's no magic. We, we don't believe in magical prayer. There's no such thing as a magical prayer. Because if proper faith is not in place, even though you pray a prayer, you will not be saved. Okay? Proper faith must be in place. Conviction must be in place. Conviction. I am a sinner. You realize, you recognize, I have sinned. One of the one of the uh, very simple acronyms uh, to help people to understand salvation is A B C. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe that Christ died for you. Confess your sins. That means say the same thing about your sins as He says. A B C. So we're going to pray this prayer. No magic, but if you believe, if you're convicted, if you know you're a sinner outside of Christ, this prayer or a prayer like it is all it takes for you to become born again. Amen? So I'm going to ask you, if you don't know the Lord, just pray this prayer. Pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Lord, I admit Lord, I recognize that I am a sinner. I have been living my life without you. Lord, cleanse me. Forgive me and wash me of my sins. Lord, I believe that you died for me and that now, Lord, I want to live for you. I confess my sins. I give up my way for yours. Lord, I love you and I thank you for all that you have done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to email me at that's the word men. That's, that's the word M-I-N. That's the word men at gmail. Dot com. That's the word men at gmail.com if you prayed that prayer. Amen. And listen, the Lord has a wonderful plan for your life. You may have heard that phrase before, but he really does have a plan for your life. Amen. Now walk with God. Now walk with God. Amen. We pray that you are blessed today as his word has gone forth. Amen. We pray that the Lord uh, might continue uh, to bless us uh, and to keep us as we continue to call uh, upon uh, his name. Amen. God is good. 
and, and, and God is working in our midst. Amen. We trust him and we believe him and, and we know that he is on the throne. Amen. We know that he is on the throne and he is he is working. Listen, he is going to work his will uh, in your life. He's going to work his will uh, in your life. And we just honor him and we bless him. Amen. Well, once again, we want to once again, I want to thank our new friends watching over satellite TV. Uh, we pray that uh, that uh, those watching, those under the sound of this word, will will pray for us and support us as we uh, as we step out in faith. Uh, that this word uh, might go out uh, to those who need to hear it. Amen. We we believe that God is in it, and we believe that God has opened up this door uh, of opportunity uh, to spread this gospel uh, even further. Amen. And so we honor the Lord. And bless him and thank him uh, for who he is and what he has done. Amen. Uh, let me say just thank you. I, I see all of you. I see every single one of you watching live right now uh, online. I see you. Thank you so much uh, for joining each and every, uh, uh, for joining us. Amen. I just want to say God bless you. Uh, and I, play, I pray that the Lord will continue to keep you. I, I see all of you watching right now over Facebook. Amen. Uh, God bless you, and I, and I thank you all for being with us. Let me just invite you uh, to continue to, uh, as I said, to pray for us as we continue to venture out. Let me just say we have written a book uh, entitled The Lights, uh, rather Churchified or Sanctified. It is available on Amazon.com. Amen. Uh, and we pray that it will be a blessing uh, to your heart and life. We've also uh, written a book entitled The Lights in the Windows, Eight Basic and Powerful Principles on Evangelism. Amen. Once again, we pray that both of these books uh, will be helpful and beneficial uh, to your life. You can go to our website at that's the word org, and you will find two free ebooks uh, there uh, that are waiting to be downloaded to your device. Amen. Uh, that's once again, our website is that's the word dot org. Amen. That's the word Dot org. Amen. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, you can do so by going to That's the Word Ministries on YouTube. You can also follow us on our Facebook page, which is That's the Word Ministries. And you can also go uh, to Spreaker.com, which is our which is our main podcast platform where you'll find all the other podcasts that the Lord has allowed this ministry to be able to produce uh, over the years. Amen. And of course, always, we want to invite you to join us throughout the week. We'll be here tomorrow, uh, once again, for the Line by Line podcast. Amen. We're going through the Word of God, one verse at a time. Amen. We are currently in the book of Mark, Mark chapter number nine. Amen. So join us tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Tuesday night, we'll be back here once again with the Bible Speaks Live with our hot topic Tuesday. We'll have another uh, what we believe it will be another powerful topic uh, that uh, that will be helpful and beneficial to your heart and life. Amen. So join us on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. That's Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Wednesday night. Wednesday night we are we are bringing beginning to bring to a conclusion our study of spiritual growth uh, and we're going to embark upon a brand new study series uh, entitled The Ministry of Reconciliation. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, and so we pray that you will join us once again also Wednesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Amen. And so once again, uh, we, we thank you uh, for being with us and for joining us. Amen. Until the next time that we meet, we will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day and we will see you. God bless you.